What is up everybody and welcome back to Lesser Athletes. Today we got potential Jarrett Allen trades. I would not be expecting uh, me to say that a while ago, but we're just going to get some hypotheticals because the Cavs said after they tragically lost to the Knicks, a very shocking loss to the Knicks after training for Donovan Mitchell, they said some moves were incoming and Jared Allen was on the chopping block. And so today we're thinking about some ideas that maybe Jared Allen gets traded, maybe you get some wing depth, some guard depth, maybe you get another center and you get just more depth overall with some free agents like Carlos Liver in the team. So today, let's start it out. So we're going to go for our most likely team, and this is easily the Dallas Mavericks, a team that is definitely trying to buy right now for the whole NBA, especially centers. They need shot blocking. They need rebounding. They need guys that can catch the ball in lobs. Well, who do you think I just explained, and who do you think I just described? And that's Jared Allen. So here we're going to give Jared Allen in uh, to the Mavericks for Tim Hardaway Jr. and their 10th pick, which will be pretty good for the Cavs, especially with how young their team are. Team is. Tim Hardaway Jr. could be a replacement for Kara Silver, and you could maybe use that money for somewhere else. You could also, with the pick, trade it if you really need to. I don't think you have to, which you could probably, with a 10th pick, you could get a gray dick would be great for a 3 and D shooter. Um, you could maybe somehow Taylor Hendricks falls to you. Jairus Walker somehow falls. I doubt Cam Whitmore falls. But these are some people that you can get. You can get guard. You can get somebody you just really like with the 10th pick with how deep this draft class is. And I think the Cavaliers will very, very much exceed with maybe train Jared Allen, putting Evan Mobley in that true center position. Like he could be um, Jared Allen being 6'11". I don't think he's 6'11". I think he's 6'10", 6'9". Anyways. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. though could really help your shooting. Uh, there were some times where, especially in those Knicks games, that uh, shots were not falling, and Tim Hardaway could potentially be that player to really help. Now we're going to go with least likely but possible teams, which <sighs> might be shocking for a little bit, especially New Orleans Pelicans, but these are teams that I think are definitely buyers in, these, in the league now, and they're not going to sell on people, and I think Golden State especially can really buy. So we're going to start off with something with uh, Jordan Poole getting traded. Now, Jordan Poole is a great player. Great, great player. And this is basically kind of a swap for with Jordan Poole and Jared Allen. Danny Green would have to be part of a sign trade right now. He is a free agent. You only have the cap hold to him. You're going to have to uh, basically give up this money for the money to work. Um, second round picks, two of the Cavs. This is uh, extra space for you to trade. Jordan Poole could fit right in as a uh, six-man role for the Cavs. They don't really have that player that would be great off the bench. Um, Karis LeVert was kind of that, but sometimes in situations, he wasn't good at all. Um, and he's also hitting free agency, so we'll see uh, how that goes. But Jordan Poole could really be elevating the Cavs' uh, second-tier, uh, not second-tier, bench players and their um, second players coming out from the bench that could really help a team move when it comes to needing momentum when your stars aren't playing. And um, really increasing the depth would be very, very nice for them. Jared Allen, center for Warriors. Warriors are one of the worst shot blocking teams in the NBA. And I think Jared Allen elevates his team and makes it a really, really great team. Kevin Looney will be the backup. Jared Allen, your center. You have Draymond, you have Clay, you have Wiggins, you have Steph. That starting five would be amazing. But that's also saying that you get Draymond back. Um, you are losing some money in here, but you could definitely, I could see, still get Draymond depending on the situation. There might be just some moves more uh, that you would have to do to uh, keep a Draymond green. Next, we have New Orleans Pelicans, which might be interesting, but I think the Pelicans are going to start looking off to move off of Jonas Valchunas and really get someone that will go well with the young guys, which is Jared Allen. Jonas Valchunas, kind of on the slope down. He hasn't been playing as well. He's still someone that's really good at rebounding, really good. This could be a great replacement for Jared Allen, especially with a little bit less money. He's on a one-year deal, and you get a little bit better in depth when it comes to Larry Nance Jr., who still is a pretty good player in the NBA, and... You're kind of weak in the forward and power forward position. I think their main small forwards and power forwards, other than Evan Mobley being technically power forward center, is um, Isaac Okor. You can maybe say Levert. Um, and that's really much it. You have uh, Lamar Stevenson's, City Osman. Um, and then there's one more I'm forgetting Wade, I think. Something Wade. Dean Wade. 
Larry Nance Jr. can fit in. I think he would be a great role player for you, something that you would really need maybe later on. He has experience in the NBA playoffs. He has experience being a starter in this league. He, he's just a great veteran. I think that's something the Cavs are very lacking um, is veterans in this league. They have Ricky Rubio recently that they have, but I wouldn't bet on Ricky Rubio potentially coming back to the Cavaliers. But Jared Allen and the Pelicans, ooh, amazing, amazing center, I think, for them. Uh, really would help a team with uh, with Brandon Ingram. You have young players, uh, Zion especially. I think this is something that the Pelicans could really uh, gain from this. And Mojave, um, Mamad, why can I not pronounce his name? Anyways, he's going to be a free agent. So this is really just a cap hold again. Now some dark horses. And these are teams I do not think is probably going to be uh, buyers or maybe I think the Knicks are buyers, but I think um, teams that let me just talk. Let me just go. Let me just go on with the Thunder. Thunder, for example, we do not know their situation. Sam Presti has said that they're still one year away, even though they uh, really excelled with expectations. Um, Lou Dort would be a pretty good player for Cavs that I think does need defense. You get the first round pick, which is 12th pick really good for you i think something that i think this trade is maybe a little under uh little a uh, little bit under the radar where i think the thunder have enough assets to get jared allen i think jared allen just like how i'm going to say with the spurs having a traditional center next to a center that is very lanky can shoot the ball can space the floor is i think very very good and will be very valuable to teams like the thunder and the spurs with Wemby coming up and having Jared Allen would be perfect for the Thunder. You get two bigs. You did bad when it came to rebounding and defending the uh, interior basket. You can look how Rudy Gobert destroyed them and Cat destroyed them when it came to the Timberwolves. Adding someone like this, having to go away from Lou Dort would suck, but it does help you in the long run. The first round pick would be hard for the Thunder to trade away. I already know. As I already know the Thunder do not want to be trading first round picks, but this is what it's going to take, and I think... The Thunder definitely would benefit from this. I think the Cavs would too. The first round pick could be a great player with such a deep uh, deep class. And Lou Dort would be great off the bench or even started with a good small forward role. Next we have San Antonio Spurs. And this is like I said with the Wemby situation. How Wemby I think would is really going to benefit this league with a traditional center next to him. This could be, for example, they keep Zach Collins, Zach Collins. I don't think the Spurs, though, is a, a buying team right now, so I doubt that this trade happens. These are more of a hypothetical what if, so I could be potentially right when it does happen or if something would happen. Um, Zach Collins he is a replacement for Jared Allen. Pretty good. You get Devontae Graham, who's still been a good player, uh, especially he'll be great off the bench for you. The contract's a little sad that... Uh, it's not that good of a contract, but that's okay. But I think the real valuable pick is the 2024 first round pick. Spurs with Jared Allen would easily probably become and try and compete right away. So this pick could definitely convey top 10 protected. It could even be top 5 protected maybe a little later on. Um, it would definitely make Spurs immediately try and compete. Um, and I think Jared Allen and a Wemby combo would be amazing. I would really want more guards for them. Um... And if you get a great passing point guard, this team is amazing. This team will be very, very good and could actually go deep. Not deep, deep, but go into the playoffs to the West. Now, the New York Knicks, this trade is a little iffy for me because I don't think the Cavs would trade to the Knicks. I don't think the Cavs would trade Jared Allen even to the Knicks. No, I don't think they would really trade to a East team. It would have to be very, very convincing to trade to an East team. But for what you're getting here, I think it's worth it. Knicks have made it very clear that they really do want to compete and that they need another star and they really need um, somebody else. And I don't think you're I don't think you should trade Julius Randle unless you're getting back something better than Julius Randle. I don't think you should be trading uh, RJ unless you're getting a great replacement, which something else could be great than RJ. You could have got Donovan Mitchell, which would have been perfect. Um, and then the Cavs. You get a Mitchell Robinson, which is almost exactly like Jared Allen, just maybe a little worse. Not maybe, is a little worse. And Quentin Grimes off the bench would be amazing for you. Someone that I think would definitely be an easy help and a very good replacement for the backup uh, position of a shooting guard like Karis LeVert 
Or you could try and put him in the four position. Or not four, sorry, three position. And the Knicks have already said that Quentin Grimes is someone that they really like. But the addition of Josh Hart is going to kick him into a more of a seventh man role than a sixth man role with Emmanuel quickly. And Quentin Grimes is probably not going to be a long term Nick. So I think the I think trading Quentin Grimes soon and Mitchell Robinson for a Jared Allen would be really good if you're the Knicks. But I doubt a trade like this would ever happen, especially that. Uh, depending on how they like Quentin Grimes, Josh Hart, I know is a free agent, but them training for Josh Hart and playing him so much is kind of like a nod that's saying, Hey, you're staying on the team. And Quentin Grimes, I think is definitely going to lose his role. So I think they're going to be okay with trading him. I just doubt that the Cavs are going to trade, um, Jared Allen to the Knicks to an East team that they just went against in the playoffs that they could definitely go against again in the playoffs. Other than that, that's all for today's video just some hypotheticals some fun trades always have fun you know we're always here to have fun and gotta love the off season uh very much more hypotheticals but other than that i hope you guys have a great day thank you and goodbye